What is the key to having great sex? What is the key? Yeah! <laughs> First thing is being with somebody that you want to be with. I mean, not somebody, not somebody that you just think is hot. First of all, I'm too old to call a guy hot. And okay. I get really annoyed with like 45, 50 year old women going, well, he's so hot. It's like, I want interesting. I want evolved. I want, I want somebody who has a brain and has a life and has, is in touch with his feelings. You have to really uh, want to get to know this person, not just physically, but you want to get to know them mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And that requires honesty. And I think that it's really amazing that people will lie about their age, they'll lie about their weight, they'll lie about how much money they make, and then people will still say, oh, and I'll fuck you too. What would make them truthful when they're sleeping with you? So I think honesty is far and beyond the most important, the most important key to having great sex. I've lied about my age. And this is because I think there is so many false expectations about what you're supposed to be by a certain age. Uh, so for example, for me, for like my age, which I will say what I am, I'm supposed to be like a dominant, like a cougar. And a lot of times I actually don't feel that way. I actually want a man to be really strong and to take the charge. And, and I just want to be soon away. The first key to really great sex with anybody is incredible kissing. I think that if you have an incredible kisser, uh, it will lead to great things. You cannot teach somebody to kiss better or to kiss well any more so than you can take a 40-year-old man or a woman and reteach them how to hold a fork and a knife and use it properly at a table. You just can't. I watch their hygiene before pairing sexually with somebody like I have a seen a man go to the bathroom, you know, and they're taking like a long time and I know they're taking a number two and if I don't hear the if I don't hear the sink water and that they're washing their hands, so I won't have sex with them. So I expect the same thing from them. I expect good oral hygiene like you. I expect them to have their apartment clean. I expect them to have wine. I expect them to all those factors are important. So for me to do a little bit for them it's not a big deal to douche to to be trimmed or shaved or to um, wear a particular shade of lingerie, those, those are not big deals. The point between the balls and their asshole, they never clean it. Yeah. It smells, it smells like, a, it smells like a teenager's sock yeah, drawer. Yeah. I, have, I don't know what the fuck that is. I have to talk a little bit about this issue. This is just oh. disgusting. I mean, oh. it's like Limburger cheese. Okay, let me say this. Um, when I go to the bathroom, um, every time I go to the number two, I step into the shower with the, with the handle and I clean myself and I use soap or sometimes just water. But I know not all men do this. Please. I'm telling you they don't. If you're a man, please do this when you go the number two for your lady. Great sex is not just the physical act of sex. It's what leads up to it. The foreplay, the, the playfulness, the, the flirt, flirtation, the sense of longing, the sense of wanting. There is nothing worse than having a guy, you know, start to kiss you and then he's like playing twister with your boobs. Right foot, right hand blue, left hand yellow, and it's like, are you 12 years old and in the school playground? I mean, it's like they do the same thing over and over again. That's just a turnoff. So if you get all of these great things in play and you manage to both have an orgasm or two or six, if you're lucky, and, and there's cuddling afterwards, and there's laughter and giggling, and, and just that sense of, like, this is something that we have, with, that we've shared with each other. And then you get, you know, breakfast served to you, or you get taken out to dinner, or you cook together, and then you have some more sex. Any one of those things makes it great sex. For me, um, I think, um, quite honestly, to be honest, I would rather have a one-time encounter more often than a second or third or long-term relationship because of the element of excitement. But that doesn't necessarily translate into, into great sex because the first time you have sex with somebody, normally, it's not incredible. 
because it's awkward and they and they're doing a lot of times people bring their own luggage and they do things that they did with their previous partner their previous girlfriend or boyfriend or wife or lover or whatever and just because it worked with that person it doesn't mean that you can just apply it you know to the next person and that's I think a cardinal mistake that both men and women probably make with their partners there's excitement to me in 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 both of these situations. Uh, there's excitement in going through stages with each person of every aspect of yourself, sexual, spiritual, and physical. And there's excitement in, in, um, in just being uh, more superficial and focusing more on seduction. There's excitement in both of these situations, in both of these type of relationships. You know why it's called a blowjob? Why? Because it's work. And I want to get paid for it. I am never giving a blowjob again <laughs> unless I'm going to be repaid for it with great sex also. 